Loop is this tremendous interest in a process called apoptosis, which is a kind of cell death. Uh, cells die all the time. People estimate there are millions of billions of cells that die every day just upon the normal turnover of cells. But certainly in various clinical conditions, such as infection or injury, the number of cells that die can go up dramatically. So cells, when they die, do a number of things, one of which is they release their content, and the other of which is they acquire inflammatory properties, that they, dead cells themselves, can stimulate the immune system. And it's probably a system in the body to, single, to uh, signal danger, what we call danger. So in a disease like lupus, there seems to be uh, the idea that there's either too many cells that die in a way that the body can't clear them away, uh, or that the clearance systems themselves have somehow gotten disturbed so that the amount of the, the number of dead cells or their contents increases. And what this does is cause the immune system to get into a hyperactive state, but it also leads to the release of these molecules in the bloodstream to form immune complexes then carry out that process. I think there are several different ways that, uh, that this problem can be uh, at least approached therapeutic. One of which is to try to limit the amount of cell death, which, you know, it's certainly possible uh, depending on the clinical situation. The other is to promote the clearance, and again, there are sort of approaches that, that can be used. The other, which is the approach that I particularly follow, is can you block the downstream consequences of all this released material? So it is now recognized that DNA itself, when it gets out of the side of the cell, in fact becomes an immune activator. So what our interest is, is can you prevent the immune activation by the DNA? And another aspect of this that we're pursuing is can you prevent the interaction of DNA with the anti-DNA to limit the formation of immune complexes? We're very interested in blocking the immune effects of DNA. Uh, that's a important topic. There's been considerable research knowing now about the systems that DNA uses to signal cell activation. Most of these systems probably developed as a way to confront infection, whether it's from DNA from bacteria or DNA from viruses. So part of that is can you block those signaling systems, again, in the context of an autoimmune disease. And the other that we're very interested in is can you find molecules that bind up the DNA and sequester it so that it doesn't form immune complexes and doesn't activate cells. So for us, that's the direction. We're also interested in another class of uh, what we call structures called microparticles. Microparticles are small pieces of cell membrane that, that get released as cells die. They go into the bloodstream where they can be readily measured. So that aspect of the study was to look in patients with lupus where there are increased numbers of microparticles that are present and can we find them in the blood? And the answer is, is yes, we can do that. So that information is important to use as uh, what we would call a biomarker uh, for disease. That is, it can give us information on how active lupus it is but it can also give us information on the type of tissues that at a given time may be damaged or undergoing cell injury because they release their particles which we can find in the blood. So that research is continuing, then it's really been extended by the, into a, another concept is that the microparticles themselves may form immune complexes. Usual models of, micro, of immune complexes are based on the interaction of antibodies with antigens like DNA. But what our work has shown is that much of the DNA in the blood is actually in particles. So now what we are looking at is what type of immune complexes get formed uh, by the interaction of the autoantibody, in this case anti-DNA, with the microparticles. Mm -hmm.